What's up guys? For this video, I'm going to show you guys how to successfully complete the reverse camera install for your Mercedes-Benz W204. And in doing so, show you guys how to route the signal cable for the reverse camera from the front of the car all the way to the boot trunk area. In doing so, give you the option of either wiring it to your reverse light or to your rear fuse panel. All that coming up. Okay, so once you have your cable dropped down here, we need to remove all of this in order to run the cable the best way possible. Now, look, there are other ways of doing it where you can just pull this carpet back and then drop the cable behind here and then continue to just tuck it underneath all of this here on the side. You see this part here? You could just simply tuck it underneath here like this. With a trim removal tool, you could just keep tucking it underneath. However, if you do it right the first time, you don't have to come back and worry about it coming out or anything like that. So, I'm going to show you how I did it. I removed everything. I removed this lower flap, pulled back this carpet, and also removed this uh, side cover here as well. This side cover right here. So, in order to do this, you have to remove three T20 torque screws. Okay, there's one here, there's another one in the center, there's one more here. And then there's one more just here where this L, L bend is right there. So you have to remove these three T, T20 Torx screws. Okay. So I'm removing the last one. I've already removed two. And remember guys, make sure that you're putting these screws in a good place so that you do not lose any. Now, if you watch my video clip of how to run your your power amp cable I show you how to remove all of this okay now this is already removed but in order to remove it you need to get close to the clips there's one here one in the center and then one on the side here there's another one here one in the center and one there you just need to get close to it as possible and then pry it up like that now let me show you how it's clipped in you notice all these marks here one there's two there and there's one more there this part here sits inside this groove here and that's why the marks there you just need to get your trim removal tool and get in close to it and then just pry it up and then eventually it's just going to come off you just pry straight up it's going to be hard if it's the first time you removed it but keep at it and it's going to come off eventually okay now once you have this piece removed this scuff plate just put it to the side and then you have to pull up your trim your uh, seal so you just keep you just pull it up like this okay now all we need to do is pull it enough so that we can pry off this side piece and then you pry off this piece here you just get your trim removal tool get in between it and then pry it off that's it and then that piece comes off now you're left with this here now, in order to remove this side piece so that we can remove this lower flap get in right next to the clip like here and then pry it off like that look at that that look how easily that came off I, re I strongly recommend to pry it off from here from here rather than the plastic piece here it's much easier to just pry it off here do the same thing for this one here so we just put it, our trim removal tool right next to the clip in order to get be the best leverage possible and then pry it off now look at that look how easily that came off and then you simply pull back on this piece and it comes off look at that how easy was that guys okay and then we just put this to the side now we're left to here so now we pull back our carpet but and then we pull back our foam piece now look at this guys now we can just simply once we've removed the three screws for the lower flap we can drop it down and look how easily that comes down now and then we disconnect our light bulb turn it to the left now check out all this room we have guys look at this is this so is this not so much better to work with look at this guys Look at all this room you have now. now. When you look underneath here, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hose tie to here and then just run it across and then drop it down the side. And then we can continue. You can just continue to run it and tuck it in underneath this here. See, you can just pull this back and that's the cable right there inside. That's the cable and then just continue to run it all along the side just keep running it along running it along all the way 
and then you come to the center part you're going to do the exact same thing you just need to pry this off enough so that you can lift it up and then run the cabling through okay, there's only three of them okay there's one here one here and another one here I'm gonna show you that you don't even have to remove it completely okay guys watch this I'm just gonna pry these off so that you get room you notice how it, it has come off now and look at this room we have okay so now we can just simply run the cable along and then tuck it underneath and then put this back into place so our cable can sit in look at that see now our cables underneath and we do the same thing to the back okay and now once we get to the center this is the cable coming from the other side as you can see I've just tucked it underneath because we loosened it at the front we just tuck it underneath and then we simply continue to do so under here now look if you wanted to make, make it neater you could simply pry this off here I just I've already loosened it but you could pry it off and then tuck it underneath and look at this look how easily that tucks in there just lift it up and tuck it in you wouldn't even have to remove it and then simply just keep following this through just like this just keep following it through and then keep dropping it in behind the seal and just keep going once you get to this point here here's the cable you can go two routes all right I went the the harder route where I I removed all this side piece here and simply went behind everything but I'm going to show you another shortcut way that will save you so much time so all you have to do from here is get underneath this trim by tucking it underneath here so you have to lift it up a bit and then tuck it underneath like this you notice the cables underneath here now okay just like that because this will be covered by the scuff plate when you put it back on like this okay as you can see that's going to be covered so as long as you get this under here you won't be able to see it like that okay and then here's the rest of the cable what you do is you just lift this up so you pull straight up you just pull it straight up and it will unclip and see how the cable is there now how it just tucks underneath all here okay it just keeps tucking underneath this here and then it will come out up here right here I'll show you I'll pull it out okay so here as you can see I've pulled it out now it just simply tucks behind this cushion now look like I keep saying if you just watch my how to run your power cable for your amplifier I show you how to remove all of this here all of this so you can make it really really neat however I'm just showing you how to route the cable now because I've already done that video so be sure to check out that video and also the video on how to access the rear deck that also shows you how to remove all this as well so be sure to watch that video to see how to remove all of this stuff here okay and now from here it just tucks behind and then you just put your hand in you see the gap there you see the gap that's the cable there and then it comes out through the other side here as you can see here's the cable coming out through the other side and then you remove two push clips okay there's one here the hole there and then there is another one on this side so there's one there and then there's another one right there now once you remove these two push clips there's one there and another one there you'll be able to pull the carpet back so this is what I've done I've removed those two clips I've pulled the carpet back like this and now check this out our cable comes behind that side cushion and now look at this guys how easy is this you just tuck the cable in and look at that it's now hidden and then that's how it gets to the back and that's exactly where we need it so this is exactly where we need it to be this is the cable here so once we pull this back it gave us room in order to bring this cable in here and now all we have to do is follow this route see this cable right here this is the exact same route we're going to take and then it tucks into this here so now we have to remove this so in order to remove this you just push it together like this and it releases it one two 
and then that comes off and then we can continue to run our cable in here and follow it all the way up now what we're going to have to do is remove all of this here in order to remove this whole back area in order to wrap our cable all the way through so we can get to depending on what what type of camera you have if it's the boot handle or if it's the license plate light you're going to have to remove all this regardless so first thing we need to do is remove every single clip so we need to get all of these out so we're just going to remove all these nine clips first okay that's one two three okay so i've got this little box here so i can put them all in Six, probably ten of these or something like that. Either way, just make sure you got them all out. There we go. Okay, get in between there and then pry it down. Okay, just do it slowly and softly. You do not want to break anything. Okay, now that we've removed the ones that hold this in, you can simply remove it. Now, like I said, you press it together and then these two clips will come out and then you can just simply remove it. Pull it down because there is a part here that protrudes, I'll show you. In order to remove these, all you have to do is press it together like this. And then it unclips, see? And then open it up. You do not want to just try and pull it off, you'll break these. You do not want to break them. It, what's, this is what holds the cable in. Now, we have all that removed. We need to remove the triangle so that we can pull this whole piece out. So the first thing, there's a clip here. Pull that down and release your triangle and just set it down. And then in order to remove this piece, there are four clips that you need to pry on in order to remove it. Okay, there's two on the top and two on the bottom. The ones on the top you press down and the ones on the bottom you push up. So I'm pressing down on the ones on the top. One, two. That's two released. And then there's two on the bottom, so you press them up. One, two. And then that piece just comes out like that. Just to show you what I'm talking about, to show you what I'm talking about, you see these four clips? There's one there, one there, one here, and one here. The bottom ones pry up, and the top ones you pry down. And that's it. In order to remove the rest of it, we need to remove one, two, three, four T20 torque screws. One, two, three, four. That's it. Now, because we've removed the, the four T, T20 torque screws, we can pull this down. We just pull it straight out like this, okay? But we cannot remove it yet because there is a plug for this light right here. You see this light here? So you just have to turn it to the left and then simply unplug it from there. Now we have this piece off, we can put it down. Okay, now we can pretty much get to where we need to. From here, all you gotta do is now remove your handle here. And in order to remove it, you just have to pull it towards the front of the car and then pull it down, just like that. And then it just comes out, just like this, see? And now this whole piece will come off. Don't forget to remove the other side first. And look at that. Look at that, it all comes off now, done deal. Now we can simply route our cable to where we need it and we're good. But before we can even do that, we actually need to remove this panel right here. There's two T20 torque screws that hold it in. One here and one here. Okay, now in order to move these two torques, these two T20s, I'm using a right angle tool like this, that way it's easier to reach, so I don't have to hold the tool here. Now remember, always take your time. Do not rush it. There we go. It's one screw there. Okay, and then once you remove those two T20 torque screws, there and there, there's just two more that you have to remove under here. As you can see here, where the where the handle is, there's one here, right there, and there's another one right there. 
Okay, so now once you remove those two T20 torque screws, the only thing holding it in are these push tabs. Okay, there's one there, there's these two here. You just have to push it towards the center, like that, kind of like this, and then it will release. There's one more push tab there, and the last one is there. Now I'm just going to push it, pull it out, and it should come out. There we go. There we go, guys. So I'll show you the back of it. When you look at this, what's holding it on are these push tabs, these two. So like I said, all you had to do here was push them in like that, both of them, and it would release. Also, there was those two T20 Torx screws that screw in the handle as well as this piece together. And there's another push tab there and a push tab there. So there's three yellow push tabs. One, two, three. And then there's two T20 torque screws as well as these two push tabs. Also, the two T20 torque screws on this side. Right there and there. And then this piece would come out. Okay, and now we're ready to release the license plate bulbs. Now, just to show you how they release, so what you want to do is, there's these two tabs here on each side, as you can see here. So you want to push these in and then just wiggle it out and it will come out. Okay, I'll show you. Make sure you disconnect the plug as well, obviously. Okay, so now as you can see here, I'm going to push on those two tabs and then just wiggle it left to right out. And there we go. I've already installed my aftermarket backup camera so I'm just doing all of this just to show you guys how to do it now these are awesome LEDs this would be the perfect time to change your license LEDs if you have a trunk handle camera like I do we get the camera and we install it so first thing we need to do is route these cables inside okay so it would seem that we have a problem here guys now whether or not this cable was to come through the top here it would still be a problem because the problem is that's where your LED light comes through I mean your light bulb so in order to correct this there are only two things you can do some of these come with the cable coming through this hole at the top over here where your light goes in and if it if it was to come through there you would have to get a Dremel like tool and cut out a portion of this so that your cable can run through there and not be in the way when your light bulb goes when your light bulb goes through let me show you what I mean say this is the light and this goes through the top here as you can see the light bulb has to go in through the top so if your cable was to come through here that would still not make sense because it would get in the way of the light bulb plugging in so you'd have to make an incision here so that your cable could run out freely now in this case you could do two you could do two things okay it's totally up to you I guess what I would do is I would make an incision right here just enough so this cable could sit in it like this so that it would be flush with this or you could even take it apart take off these four screws see these four black screws and then drill a bigger hole through here in order but the hole would have to be big enough to fit these cables in so the best way to correct this problem would probably be to just make an incision somewhere around the outside and then push the cable through now remember you're still going to have your rubber seal that you will take off your original light and then put it around there to help it keep airtight and to have that seal and that's it now lucky enough for me I don't have to do this I just wanted to show you guys how you would run the cabling okay so we're going to run the cable in now okay and then this would simply plug in it like this as you can see here I have just tried to squish the cable in through and it has just dented the cable right there as you can see here 
it's got a almost a cut it's just a really sharp dent right there you probably can't see it probably but there's a really sharp dent right there at the moment but if you were to just put it in like that eventually vibration wear and tear hitting bumps it would eventually just cut that open and then you'd lose your camera connection so the best way to rectify this would be honestly in my opinion is to make an incision there and then put the cable in like that so it's flush and then you could just run the cable then you then you just have to run the cable in like that and then route it through and that's it because I already have a camera right here I don't have to worry about running this cable so you know what guys I'm gonna do a giveaway once I hit 750 subscribers whoever has liked this video and commented below I'm gonna give this to somebody this whole setup from the Fakra cable to this light to the cabling everything I'm gonna give it all away guys so if you want a backup camera for your car I'm gonna do a giveaway guys because I don't need it I've already got a backup camera okay and so from here if you just imagine that this is all done right and the cable is in there flush all you'd have to do from here is route your cable in like so push it all the way in and then clip this in like that look at that there you go doesn't that look funny with uh, two cameras <laughs> There's the camera there. There's my there's my original trunk handle one that I use. And there you go. Okay, and then from here, as you can see, what we have to do now is route our camera cable all the way and plug it in. And that's it. There you go. Then we plug in our power cable. Now for the power cable, I would wrap this power cable this side, come down, drop it down back behind here. So, this is what, exactly what I would do. I would tape it all up like this. Tape it, tape it, keep taping it. Drop it down, drop it. Okay just like this this is exactly what I would do follow it down all the way down I would tape it all along here okay and then just leave this right here and then just tape it there so it would never come off just tape it around run the cable in drop it down here behind the carpet here so that it will drop where the fuse panel is now just to recap on how to route the cable once it hits the boot area so this is how I would route the cabling okay from here I just take it along here and then stick it along this boot hinge just like this and then follow it up go along here where the red tape is this is the actual camera cable tape it along there put some tape around the connection plug for the RCA as well as the power connection and then follow it along drop it down here and from here you would drop it just there where the hinge is drop it behind this carpet so that it would simply drop down here to our rear fuse panel okay and from here there are going to be a number of ways that you can hook up your power source now you can either use a 12 volt switch power source but in my case because my camera has LED lights I don't want to use a 12 volt switch power source because then my camera will be running 24 7 once I switch on my ignition so the best way to hook up your camera cable your power cable would be to either use a rectifier a relay or a capacitor that way you can wire the power to your actual reverse light and eliminate the possibility of noise or fuzzy lines when you turn on the ignition to your car and it's connected to your reverse light because the Mercedes has a 
SAM module, which is a signal acquisition module. It senses when there are voltage drops in your car and if the if there is a voltage drop, it will send an error message to your instrument cluster, therefore displaying an error message. So in order to rectify that, you can either use a rectifier, a capacitor, or a relay. So I'm going to show you how to hook it up to your reverse light using these methods. So as for how to tackle the fact that this cable does not sit flush when you're trying to install it, because what happens is you have the bracket that the hole that this sits in and if you just sit this cable here like this once you plug it in it's going to make a dent in the cable and eventually as you keep driving with vibration and hitting bumps over time it's going to eventually cut through this cable because it is sharp the hole where the the camera sits through so what I've done to rectify that is I've just made a little hole here as you can see I just used a file and I kept filing it down until this cable could sit through it flush like this now look there's probably going to be many different ways you can tackle this but this is the way I've chosen to tackle it just to make it the easiest way possible and then you can simply install it without it no longer being in the way that way it can fight being ripped apart by the the hole the cutout that you install this through. In order to make sure that the cable sits where it does, what I've done here is I've put it through the gap that I've made and then I've lifted this up a bit. I've lifted it up enough so I can push the cable through. Okay, there we go. Now the cable's through, just like this. So now, this is going to help hold it in place as you install it, as you can see here. Now, we can plug it in and it will sit flush. There we go. Bam, there you go, done. As you can see, there's no gaps anywhere. It sits flush. So now your light bulb can now sit through the top and uh, you're good to go. And now because this video was long enough, I'm going to show you how to wire it to your reverse light using a rectifier, a capacitor or a relay in the next video. So be sure to tune in. And that brings us to the end of the video, guys. So. I really hope that through my videos, you guys are starting to learn how to DIY yourselves at home, thereby saving the money and keeping it in your pocket. There is nothing more satisfying than being able to step back at the end of the day, looking at the job you've done and telling yourself, I did that. I actually did that myself with a little bit of research and a couple of online videos, I managed to do that myself. There is nothing more satisfying than that and the sense of accomplishment that you can get from that is just overwhelming sometimes. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I really hope that it encourages you to take on some tasks yourself, thereby also expanding your knowledge and your skill level so that in future you can take on more projects and save that money without having to hire someone to do the job for you. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off.